What is going on guys? Today we're going to be looking at making a very basic cloud. I'd first like to thank my Patreon supporters for supporting the channel and making this even possible for me to do. Right, so as you can see here, we have sort of a basic cloud. However, if I move it, it actually changes dynamically to the location it is in the actual scene. So now, so that way if you were like under here, you'll actually have a cloud look like it's moving above you properly rather than being very static. So I'm going to show you how to do that today. So if we duplicate this over, we apply a new material to it, we thread it on. Okay, so I'm going to start working out my material. So if I actually load up my other material, I'll show you how basic it actually looks. As you can see, there's what, nine? Nine. I have nine nodes here to make this result. It does not look like that in the preview, because for some reason in the preview, it's always stronger with um, tessellation than it is in the actual... Um, like actual level so I'm going to show you how to do that so if we move this over here I'll call this new material cloud test we put it onto there there you go that finally loaded and we come into our cloud test now what we want to start off with is we want to click on our cloud test we want it to be subsurface that one because we want light to shine through it and we also want it to have tessellation. So if we scroll down, find tessellation, there you go. And just click flat tessellation or PN triangle and um, triangles. I believe that's better for rounded objects. So you probably want that, but I've worked with flat so far. So um, first you want is your, we'll put color on it first. So one constant, so one left click and we'll just go 0.95 because if at one it's pure white we don't want it to be pure white we would be slightly off in fact we could t um tint it like a yellow slight yellow if we wanted to to give the feel that the sun's like shining on it but i usually, i just had mine at 0.95 next we can actually start setting up the displacement so type in noise put that in click on your noise and if we actually preview it you can see way too much noise we, we don't want our cloud to be pointing like in and out that much. We want it to be very um, spread out. So the more we lower this, the more those will start being spread out. There you go. And I believe 00 .001 was the one I worked with. Yeah, it was. Yep. So now we're going to multiply that. Oh, M left click. You don't need to type that in. And we're going to multiply it by 100. You can change this to whatever you want. But I have mine at 100 because I thought that was the nicest sort of result. Clamp this. And the reason I clamped this, this was something I did at the end, was because on the actual cloud, something I started noticing was um, when it moves along, you did get some things point out really sharp. So to avoid that, I put a clamp on it so that way it can only point out to a certain level before it smooths off. So if we make sure this clamp is set to... Uh, that's minimal, so minus 200, so for the indents, and 200 for it bumping out. So it can't exceed those values. Then I want to multiply it by a vertex normal. And every time you do tessellation, you always need to multiply it by a vertex normal. Otherwise it will point in a weird direction. This sort of tells it what direction it needs to be bumping out in. So then we want to connect this up to our world displacement. You can now one left click, get a, uh, one constant. You can add that up to tessellation multiplier. And I have mine at 10. That might be a bit too high, but this just for this example, I had it 10. You probably want it as like, like a two or a four or something. Or you don't even have to plug that in, but yeah, I have mine at 10. Now all we got to do is put in our opacity. And our um, emissive color and surface color. The reason I have a tiny bit of emissive color is because I don't want the bottom of the cloud to be black. I want it to be slightly gray, obviously, because the light's going to be shining through. So, to solve this, I just put it into emissive 2. And we can put that to 0 0.00. Mine is at 2.5 in a moment, but we'll see what it looks like at 5. And we'll apply that. And that should be pretty much done. We stop reviewing that, we go minimize that. We look over here. We 
when it loads. There we go, and we should have our cloud. So yeah, the reason I set those um, emissive colors because look at the bottom. So this one's slightly darker because that's a 0 0.025, I believe, or 0 0.025, and that's at a 0 0.005. So it's slightly brighter. Depending on just how you want it, you could change it to however you want. I can scale this, and preferably, what you'd want to do is you'd want to go into Maya or Blender or whatever 3D software you're using and actually model the basic shapes of the clouds first and then throw this material on. But for now, um, I'm just using a, a sphere from the engine and I'm just sort of manipulating that. So yeah, you can stretch that out however you want. And yeah, and that's pretty much how you get your basic cloud. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope this uh, video was very informative. Um, hope you enjoyed. If you do want to support the channel, you can check out my Patreon in the description. It would be very helpful and it would help me be able to produce more videos a week for you guys to enjoy. Thank you and bye-bye.